What's up guys, Velocity from Pitchfork Academy, back with another Unreal Engine 5 material tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create simple directional gradients on your meshes using the bounding box UV node. This approach is especially useful when you want your gradient effects to stay consistent across different mesh sizes without relying on traditional UVs. We'll start by blending two colors across the mesh, choosing whether the gradient runs along the X, Y, or Z axes, and controlling where it starts and how it fades. After that, I'll show how to use this for an emissive gradient, including a pulsing effect over time, perfect for things like a glowing barrel. And finally, here's a quick in-game example from a prototype we're working on, where this technique is used to blend from a wood-like surface into a mossy green tone using a top-to-bottom gradient, helping the character sit more naturally into the environment. Before we get started, just a quick reminder that my Patreon, Velocity's Vault, is a great way to support me and get immediate download access to this tutorial's project files, along with all of my other material and graphics tutorials. There's also an ultimate tier for anyone who wants more hands-on guidance. A lot of you are indie devs, maybe focused on gameplay first, so the visual side naturally takes a back seat. If you would like any feedback on your materials, guidance on art direction, or help refining the visual identity of your project, that tier includes a monthly one hour call where we can go over any questions or challenges you might have. You'll find everything linked down below. Now let's get into the tutorial. All right guys, so most likely you have your own meshes that you want to use for this gradient effect, but if you wanted to follow along exactly using the rifle and textures that I'll be using in the tutorial, I'm using the first person template map with the arena shooter variant. This will go ahead and include the rifle and this test map here, um, but I'm just using it so I can have a rifle to test the gradient on. All right guys, here we are in the engine and I have my rifle here. And the first thing I want to do is just select my rifle and check its current material. So this one only comes with two textures, a base color and a normal. Yours might have more if you've already set up your materials for either your weapon or your character or whatever you're applying this to, and that's totally okay. We're just going to be multiplying from the color here, and then we'll also be adding to any emissive color that we already have. So you might have some emissive logic plugged in, and you'll just be able to get an add node, and your existing stuff will go into A, and then the new um, logic that we'll create in a moment will go into B. Um, but this is just handy to see really quickly, so I know what textures I need to create my new material. So I'm not gonna save that. I'm going to now, in my content browser, right-click, make a new folder called materials and then inside of here i'll just right click and new material and i'll call it m underscore gradient something like that and then i'll double click to open it up and drag it on screen and then i want to go ahead and find those textures that are on this gun so i happen to know that they're in the weapons folder and rifle textures and then I'll just hold shift and click both of them to select both and drag them in to my material. Now I want to drag the normal in, but I don't wanna uh, do anything with the base color just yet. Um, so the first node that we need, which is the main node that we'll be using to create this gradient, we'll right click and search for bounding box based UV zero to one. Either one of these will work. And now we have this. Now, really quickly, I just wanna plug this into base color to show what it does. Go ahead and save that. And we can really quickly apply that to our mesh. So right away, this looks really cool. It creates a nice soft gradient all around of different colors. And it, essentially it's mixing red, green, and blue based on the direction. So um, it's creating this sort of multi-directional gradient, which is nice, but we're just going to create a gradient that we can control. We'll just select either, you know, we want it on the uh, Y axis, the X axis or the Z axis. So we can go back to our material and I'll just disconnect this by holding Alt and clicking. And so the R is going to be the X axis, the G is the Y axis and the B is the Z. Um, but we don't actually have to choose right now. We can choose later in our material instance by dragging off of RGB and searching for a channel mask parameter. And I'll call this color direction. Because at first we're just going to tint the gun camo um, with color. We'll do the emissive glowing stuff um, next. So from here, we want a way to control the gradient. So I'll subtract. 
and then I'll hold S and click for a scalar value, and I'll call this color bias. This will control where the gradient starts at, and a value of zero is good. And then from here, um, I'm going to get a power node. Now you could get a multiply node, but the power node creates more of a um, softer effect, and I much prefer the power node over multiply. Uh, so I'm just going to copy color bias over and call it color contrast. And I'll set this default value to be two. And then we can drag off of this and saturate. Uh, the saturate node clamps your value between zero and one. Essentially what we're doing is we're creating a black and white mask or black and white gradient um, based on a certain direction on the gun. And we need that to stay between zero and one. If we start to crank up this power or subtract or add below or above one or below zero, we'll get some unnatural results if we don't saturate. So this just helps clamp it basically. Uh, and then we can go ahead and get a lerp. So if you hold L and click on your keyboard, you can get a lerp node. You can also search for linear interpolate. That's um, the actual name for it, lerp for short. And then we want to basically, you, you can blend between two values with the lerp. So our alpha is the blend or our zero to one gradient. So we'll plug that into alpha. And then we want to now get two colors. So I'll hold V on my keyboard for a vector parameter. And I'll call this color A. Set the default to white. Paste that down. And then this one will be called color B. Color A goes into A and B goes into B. And now we can hold M and click for a multiply. And we're just going to multiply our existing base color by this logic. So now we have um, two color options and they will be based on this gradient that we're creating. Now I wanna set my default direction to be green because I happen to know that this mesh uh, front to back is using the green axis or the Y. So now we can go ahead and save and just check out what's happening. So nothing should happen yet, but let's go ahead and right click on our material and create a material instance. I'll call it MI gradient and we'll call it color. We'll create another one for the emissive and I'll drag this on here. Nothing should change yet, but when we open up our material instance, we should be able to play with the parameters a little bit. So I'll just check everything on here. And the first thing I want to do is change color B to some other color. So you can already see the effect starting to happen. And this is quite nice. So I'll just set maybe my color to be blue and then color A maybe something like green. And then the color bias, as you can see, controls where that gradient starts. And then the power controls sort of how harsh or soft that transition is. So I usually like a value between two and five. Um, it really just depends on how obvious you want the fade to be. Maybe we'll try two there. And yeah, as you can see, we got this nice customizable weapon skin that you could create all different uh, variations with. Now, I'm not gonna show it um, in this tutorial, but you could of course use this same logic to blend between two different textures as well. So if you had two different textures, um, you could just have another lerp and plug this into that, and it would blend between them using the same logic as you see here. Um, but this is just a cool idea. You can kind of create gradients just using that. So let's go ahead and now create the emissive logic. So we're gonna create a cool emissive pulse based on the same gradient direction where it kind of pulses over time. All right, so we can actually just copy these nodes from the saturate back down below. And then I'll zoom in and I just wanna rename color direction to emissive direction and color bias to emissive bias. And you guessed it, color contrast to emissive contrast. And then we want to multiply. So I'll hold M and click for a multiply, plug that into there. Hold V on my keyboard for a vector parameter and call this emissive. I'll set the default to be white.
And then we can now just really quickly plug this into a miss of color and see what's happening. Let me just go ahead and save, go back to my level. And as you can see, now we have a uh, customizable, or not customizable yet, but um, just you can see the effects starting to happen. So let's go back, we're not finished quite yet. Uh, we actually wanna set the emissive bias a little bit higher by default. Let's go 0.3 and then emissive contrast will go eight. This will just push it to the um, front a little bit more. Now you can see it's kind of just on the tip there. Um, but we're gonna increase that brightness as well. Now I just wanna disconnect this multiply here and we're going to copy and paste this multiply. And usually we, you would just get one scalar parameter and plug it into here for maybe emissive brightness and you could scale it up and this color would become brighter. You can also do it by cranking this V value above one, but I think that's um, not very good for this case. So what we're going to do is based on time, we're going to blend between two brightnesses. So what I'm going to do now is um, create that time logic. So I'll right click and search for time. And then we'll drag off and get a multiply. Hold S and click for a scalar. I'll call this emissive speed. And I'll set it to 0.2 by default. Actually, we'll do zero by default in case we want the um, low not to be pulsing. And then I'll drag off and do a sign. So this will kind of go up and down between zero and one. And then from here, we want a constant bias scale. So the sine wave naturally goes down to negative one and then back up to one and then down to negative one. Um, but this constant bias scale, essentially we'll take that value and push it to be in zero to one range. So this will make it so our emissive pulse doesn't go away for so long. Uh, it just makes it look much smoother. And now we want to get a lerp node. So I'll hold L and click for a lerp. Plug constant bias scale into the alpha. And then now we need two parameters. So I'll hold S and click, and I'll call this first scalar parameter emissive A for the A input. And I'll set this to a default of 10. And then I'll copy this down, call this one emissive B, default value, let's do 100. And then we'll plug that into B. Actually, I'm gonna set it to 10 by default, just so that way, um, no matter what, if you didn't want it to pulse and you just wanted the front end of your mesh or your barrel to glow, it'll just be this, this value here. And then we'll, we can finally multiply that on top. Just go ahead and drag this into emissive now. And then let's go back to our material. And then I just wanna quickly open up my gradient color. And I'm just gonna treat this as no emissive whatsoever. So I'll set both of those values to zero. Now I want to create a new material instance of our master material. And I'll call this one mi underscore gradient underscore glow. And then let's just duplicate this. Drag these over a little bit. And then we'll just drag this one onto here. So by default, our gun is just the basic color. And then we have the glow in the front, which is just white. Let's go ahead and open up our new material instance and see what we have to mess around with. So we're not worried about the color bias, but of course you could layer on top a gradient color base using the color bias contrast and the color A and B, but I'm just worried about the emissive at the moment. So what I wanna do first is just um, turn on the emissive parameter here. And as you can see, we can fine tune that value. Let's make it a reddish orange color. And then now we can go up to our emissive A and B. I'll leave A by default, that's what we're seeing now. If we set this to one, it'll be uh, much more dim. So 10 default, just a little bit brighter. And then let's do 100 um, for the B. Now if we go to our emissive speed and set this to be 0.2, you can see it sort of pulses to be dimmer and then brighter. And then of course you can really go crazy with this value if you like. It can create some cool effects, get some nice bloom going on. And then we have our emissive bias and contrast, which are the same as the color bias and contrast. You can control where the gradient starts to happen. 
I found that a value of three was good for me because for this mesh, the magazine is part of the mesh. So it's not a separate material slot. So if I were to bring it back even further, it would just affect the mag, which may be a cool effect for you, but I just like tweaking it until it just barely goes to the mag. And then the emissive contrast just controls sort of the overall strength of the gradients. And I found a value of eight was decent. All right, guys, that is how to create directional gradients using the bounding box UV node based on your mesh to drive different effects in your materials. If you learned anything at all, it'd mean a lot to me if you left a like on the video and subscribe to our channel because it lets us know that you want to see more videos like this one. This has been Velocity with Pitchfork Academy, and I'll see you in the next one.